Right now, I can, I can put a bag like this with 1.2 billion and put a red tape written diplomat. That's it. Under the Vienna Convention, states agree to exempt diplomatic luggage from airport searches. Hello, family. This is Pastor Gideon. If you are interested in the word of God, you are in the right place. This is Kingdom Matters. Today, we are talking about the gold mafia. The gold mafia that involves Prophet Hubert Angel and the lessons we can take from it. Now, this is not one that we are enthused about, but then, nonetheless, with every happening, we must take lessons from. So, this is an investigative documentary piece that was produced by the Al Jazeera when they went undercover to talk to some people about money laundering. And then, the outcome involved a man that we are interested in, one that represents Christianity in many places. And so we are looking at it so that we can take lessons from it. He is my first ambassador at large assigned to promote Zimbabwe brand. Now the first lesson here is this. Don't laugh. Don't mock. Don't laugh when somebody finds themselves in a predicament or in a situation which is not pleasant. When men fall, you take lessons. You don't laugh. Now, if all that we've seen in the videos is true as it happened, then it is a big blow. It is a disgrace to Christendom because when you mention him, it's Christianity that comes to mind. Even in the documentary, they showed his church, they showed him ministering in church. And that means it is a dent on Christianity. Now, this thing should not be a thing a Christian should be caught in. But whilst you are watching it, you must ask yourself, if you were the one in that position, would you have done better? Now, never drop your guard and Christian virtue on any day and at any time. There are three things that destroy men, Christians, and ministers of God. The love of money, which is gold. The first gene. The love of women which is girls which is the second gene and the pride of life which is glory the glory that belongs to god when men take it and assume it they get into troubles so don't take these three g's as a christian as a minister of god for granted gold girls and the glory that belongs to god in matthew 6 24 the bible says no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and money or mammon so please be on your guard when it comes to money and we've been talking about this over and over and over and over money should be under your feet it should not be over your head money should not be allowed to dominate you and don't lose your sense and your virtues when you come face to face with deals that will bring you money stand your ground first john chapter 2 15 to 16 says love not the world neither the things that are in the world then he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him basically they are trying to compete with the place of God in your life and you must keep your Christian virtue and God on 24 7 for all that is in the world the last of the flesh the last of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but it is of the world now this is what I want you to think about imagine imagine prophet angel standing up to the gang that um, came undercover saying me I am a Christian I don't do wrongs to get money I don't do wrongs in order to enrich myself and it being broadcasted on Al Jazeera. Now see the effect it is going to have. See the picture it is going to put out there. Now the second lesson is don't boast in your abilities. Now one of the commonest things I'm hearing after this investigative piece came out is that is he not the one who says he's the sharpest prophet? Is he not the one who is saying that he can see and change um, score lines and there's nothing that beats him? Now whether you are overcoming an act, don't boast that you, you are able to overcome this. Um, this thing is little to me. And whether you have an ability, don't boast in that ability. Rather, boast in the Lord that gave you that ability. If you have a genuine gift, use it with all humility. You see, when pride comes in and we begin to tout ourselves as the best, the biggest, the sharpest, these are the things that comes in. Because Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. A little thing like this will escape you when if truly you have a gift, you are supposed to sense it, you will not see it. And maybe even the love of money will blind you such that even when God is prompting you, you will not see it. So whether you have self-control over certain things or you have an ability that is being projected out there, don't let pride get in there. 
And one of the ways you can do that as a minister of God is that stop letting people clap for you when you are ministering that ability. It is not of you. It is of God. See yourself as a servant who deserves no accolades. Luke 17 says, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Don't let anybody be a backing vocalist praising you. That is an excess that has gotten into the church in Africa. Prophesy. Go deeper. The best prophet. The sharpest prophet. These things, they are unnecessary. It breeds pride. And this pride leads to these kinds of happenings. So please beware. Now the third lesson is that at this point, you know that even the so-called sharpest prophet is still not omniscient after all. Now, this is why you also must strive to grow and to know the Lord for yourself. You must grow in the Lord for yourself. Leaving your faith, your safety, your spirituality all in the hands of a man is a dead end. It's not going to take you anywhere. You need to also take responsibility of your spirituality that you must also grow in the Lord by yourself. Know the Lord for yourself. If you leave all your guidance in life to a prophet, know that it's not all the time a prophet sees everything or a pastor may give guidance which may not be right. And there is a lot of experience to that effect in life. So make sure that you begin to also know how to hear from God, how to be guided by God, how to be led by God by yourself. Now, the fourth lesson is the effect and the excess of the prosperity gospel in Africa. Yes, the prosperity gospel is all over the world, especially in America. But in Africa, it has taken a certain skyrocketing momentum that is beating everybody in the world. And it is making a lot of people save money, chase money, want money instead of God. They are in church, but they are not serving God. They are serving money. Now, don't just do anything because it will generate money so that you can come and boast about it in church and say i have this i have that and i want you to listen to this very well the consolation of christianity is not money it is the salvation of the soul and a sanctified life towards the lord jesus when you become a christian don't use your christianity to make money use it to know god and to work with the lord having money is not a primary reason why you get saved and you become a christian no it is an excess that is being propagated by the prosperity gospel john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly in luke 19 10 it says for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost you need to get this in your mind this is the primary reason for the lord jesus christ coming this is the primary reason for the gospel the salvation of souls but in africa it has been turned into a money making venture so you become a christian and all you are looking for is money you become a pastor and all you are looking for is money instead of searching for souls and instead of souls being saved and being discipled to know jesus christ and to be sanctified unto him now the last lesson so five lessons the last lesson is methodology is more important than outcome how you get things is more important than what you get now people look on the outside but god looks on the inside what is highly praised by men is not necessarily praised by god men may be praising you when you show them cars and things but god knows all of us now to me this is an illustration of how the end is going to be like so that a lot of the people who might have been successful in the eyes of men who might have gotten things without minding the methodology so that they can boast and be proud about it uh, being exposed and being made bare will make it clear that what people actually celebrate is not what god celebrates and so if you are here never be envious about anybody and as a result change your methodology your method of doing things the right way to doing things the wrong way in order to have something to boast and to brag about it is men who will celebrate you but in the eyes of god you will never be celebrated you will never be great you will never be one that god associates with and god recommends and so i'm not saying he is guilty of all the things that have been shown but look at how the expose has shown that not all the monies that people have come from the right source and i pray that if it should happen something similar should happen like this around you 
you will not be caught doing the same thing or even doing worse god bless you and before we go we pray for prophet angel that though this not desirable and something that one would want to be caught in god should use it to be a turnaround that he'll be even a better and a finer minister of god to him god bless you i love you and i'll see you in the next video shalom